All right, I want to start off by saying uh, I'm on vacation right now. I got um, my family, they're out there watching TV, and we have like a thunderstorm happening, and internet keeps going like in and out. But Entertainment Weekly just released some new images uh, for the Wheel of Time, and man, they're like looking really, really good. So, of course, I got to hop on and talk about it, and I'll be having a video coming out tomorrow with Rafe Judkins, and he actually was answering stuff from fans, um, some tweets and stuff like that. So, I thought that was super cool. So, I'm going to make a whole other separate video for that. Uh, but for now, we're going to talk about the images. We'd love you guys support uh for liking and subscribing to the page also i would love to hear from you guys one of my favorite parts about this i didn't realize until actually getting into it is really talking to the community so i would love to hear from you guys uh what your thoughts on the images are and most of the content that i'll be pulling is from entertainment weekly they have some descriptions of the images and some things about the show um so i'm just gonna like kind of talk about what they said and then kind of go over some of that stuff the first image that we get is of the cast uh the main cast the uh, emin field five uh moraine land a, a lot of the people that we've sort of just been seeing we also get some new stuff and uh upcoming images but with this first one i think everyone's looking pretty good people have sort of complained that this looks a little too like medieval um i don't know we'll see how they actually look in the show one of the things to keep in mind is that these photos that we see they're set photos um i don't think these are actual like still images from like the camera um of like the actual cinematography that we'll get i think they're just like set photos uh they're from a photographer that took pictures on set uh that like look pretty nice so i don't think these are actual shots that we're gonna get of the show but all in all i think it looks really good another thing that people are sort of complaining about is that uh perrin has a beard and matt has a beard which we know through the books that uh perrin gets his beard like later on after fight eel sort of like would be like hey you look good in a beard and he starts like growing out the beard and he complains about getting itchy uh, i would say like a way to combat that is like he has like this kind of stubble or a little bit that he has now but throughout the series the beard gets like you know obviously a lot bigger uh, i think that would be a pretty cool detail but we'll just have to see when we get there the article then goes on to say how um basically wheel of time is this bridge between lord of the rings and game of thrones which i think is like an a perfect like analogy because what robert jordan wanted to do was kind of go in the footsteps of tolkien and then obviously take it a step further what he eventually does but i think it's perfect because we have these like you know big conflicts that happen that are sort of like game of thrones but we also get a lot more of like the magic of the world and uh this world building that we don't get on that level of game of thrones so i think it'll be really cool to if we're fans to like who are fans of both lord of the rings and game of thrones uh to and then see this and be like oh wow this is like really cool <laughs> because robert jordan creates this magical world um but also has a lot of politics that are going on a lot of these like game of houses that are going that's literally what they call in the book um i feel like like robert jordan i mean i feel like george r martin like took a little bit from that the game of thrones the game of houses uh, but i i think that's really cool they have you know the magic the world building the creatures uh but and then they also have the politics and it's not just like really one-sided where game of thrones it's like more of a political thing the whole time and then at the end it's like ooh, this magical thing comes to attack us um no it's the magic it's the world building it's the uh creatures in the world and stuff like that and it'd be really cool to see on screen uh the article then goes on to start talking about moraine and rosamund pike and kind of what moraine's deal is and why this series is happening uh but the next image that we get is of rand and Egwene. uh it looks really nice we have rand sort of like smiling at her while she's like brooding looking off into the distance uh i think it's like a perfect analogy for the relationship and eventually where the relationship goes so spoiler alert for people who don't want to be spoiled even though i've already kind of said spoilers you know obviously Egwene is wanting to be independent she doesn't have those romantic feelings for him um, anymore or at least like going throughout their journey um, and she decides she wants to become an Aes Sedai uh, I mean eventually Rand is like completely okay with it but right now both of them are like oh we're we're basically betrothed to each other even though they like necessarily like aren't um, they've like grown up and they're like childhood sweethearts and stuff like that and uh, going out into the world and doing their own thing they just are like we just grew apart we're distant like you know okay we're just gonna go off uh and i think that's the beginning of this sort of thing especially because um i feel like this is the conversation that happens right before um Egwene starts unbraiding her uh hair uh which rand gets upset about and they have an argument and fight about it um so i think she's about to do that and then like they're gonna have this whole argument and fall out a little bit about it Egwene doesn't want to be tied down by the traditions of her hometown she wants to go out and explore the world she sees that i said i don't have to braid her hair so she's like i'm gonna be an i said i I'm not gonna braid my hair like that's what it is and rand is still holding on to these uh traditions of his home uh because he doesn't really want to go out and do all of this stuff and then the next image that we get which i know a lot of people are sort of like freaking out about
out. Uh, we get Loghain in his cage, and we have Aes Sedai around him. Um, and man, he's not looking happy at all. He looks he looks super like scary, but awesome at the same time. Um, and they have a description for him, and the description goes as follows: um, A man capable of using magic thinks himself a king. The Aes Sedai, a woman's only organization, think different. So I think that's like so cool for the article's sake, and I think for the beginning of the show, a little tangent is that they call it magic, and I really hope that like they don't keep using that term throughout the whole series. I hope eventually they start calling it channeling and stuff like that. But to get, I get to like get people used to what this is. You got to call it magic because you got to call it what it is. Um, but in the books, they re- refer to it as um, channeling, obviously. So um, I think if they kept using magic through the whole series and like saying that term, I would be a little bit upset. Like, okay, this is not the world building, but I was also scared they wouldn't call them Aes Sedai, but they, it seems like they are going to be calling them Aes Sedai. I, I don't know. I'm like a little worried about some of like the wording people are going to use because it's specific to Robert Jordan's world and it's important to have those things. Uh, there's not a lot of things that I would really get like up in arms about, uh, but there are some about the world building and stuff that I would be like, well, this isn't true to his uh, vision, but it seems like Rafe Judkins is going a lot of the extra mile to get all this stuff sort of right. I will say though, if you look closer at the cage, you can see all the sort of details and stuff on it. You can see the details on their costumes and design and uh, it just gives me hope for how the show is actually going to be looking. They go on to then explain that uh, male people that use the magic, um, they basically start going crazy because it was tainted by the Dark One. Um, So it's good they explain a little bit of that. I know this article isn't where most people are probably going to get their explanation for a wheel of time, but it's good that uh, the people who are writing this article know this and probably obviously the showrunners and all that they know this too so uh, they're just explaining that the male half is uh, tainted by the dark one so that means these people eventually start going crazy and stuff like that uh, so that's why they have Loghain uh, trapped in this cage basically so they're just giving context for that finally we have an image of Lane and Moraine and Shadow Logoth uh, I thought it was really interesting that Lan was like carrying her out of the city. Uh, I'm very interested to see how that is going to go down. Um, I think the set design and all that, all the detail looks really good, uh, actually making me really excited. Rafe Judkins went on to say that they have put so much time into the world building and stuff like that and getting it right that we actually spend like 15 minutes of runtime in, in the episode of Shadow Logoth uh, to really establish the world and all the conflicts and stuff that are going on with it. Um, so it's good that they're paying this much detail. It. <laughs> See, it worries people that we're going to stay in Shadow Logoth for 15 minutes. I think it could be a little too long. I don't know. I'm like really, really interested to see like how the pacing is going to go for the show. Uh, because I'm like, ooh, Shadow Logoth is only like a chapter and so like... Um, like we're going to be spending 15 minutes so like one fourth of the episode just in like a one chapter sort of thing see that it yeah you're just gonna have to see what they're gonna pick and choose to keep in the show what not to keep in the show i've had some people say that they don't think the tinkers are in the show at all for the first season i feel like at least they get like five minutes or a mention um if the tinkers aren't in there and if um oh man what's his name i forget his name but the wolf brother that um teaches perrin uh basically like all of his powers and stuff like we're like just helping him realize that he has all these powers and him sort of kind of meeting hopper and stuff uh if they don't have that stuff in there like those are very crucial things to the story the tinkers we get we get a bit of the ideal and mention of the ideal and stuff like that and in the ways of um obviously the way of the leaf and stuff um so i i don't know uh but if they definitely don't have parents powers and stuff like that i'll be like really upset so <laughs> we'll just have to see how they're gonna do that but yeah i don't i don't think that's gonna happen um i think that we're gonna have to see the wolf brother we're gonna have to see the wolves and what's going on with parent and i keep saying this but i want a trailer so bad it seems like this is the beginning of them sort of like ramping up their marketing though um so hopefully this is the beginning of their campaign where they're marketing a whole bunch of stuff uh and hopefully we'll get a trailer at least in like two weeks if it's not in two weeks i'm gonna be like absolutely losing my mind but the wheel of time community i I know everybody wants a trailer too and we complain that we don't have a trailer but when they put out images like this we still like foam with the mouth and we're so excited to just like talk about it like dive deep into them um and it's just it's just so cool to see but it's like oh please i just want a trailer so bad the last part of the article really just you know reassured me they sort of asked like rafe judkins like how do you think the story is going to stay all the way for eight seasons because he's planning eight seasons 
Um, and they're like, because all the stuff that you're planning, and like, I guess it won't matter if it doesn't go all the way to the end. And Rafe Judkins goes on to say that as long as he's staying true to the spine and the heart of the story and what Robert Jordan was trying to tell, um, all the characters, all the show is going to be able to sell itself because that's how powerful of a story that it is. Um, and I'm like, oh, I'd like coming straight from Rafe Judkins. That's like, that's so awesome to hear um, that he's wanting to stick to the heart and the spine of the story. I have a lot of faith in him. I have a lot of faith in his team and Amazon and what they're going to do. Um, I still have, you know, kind of not my necessarily like complaints, but uh, critiques, I guess you could say about things that are happening. But I know I can't make a full decision until the first season has come out. Uh, and from there, we can kind of see. So uh, Rafe Judkins is confident that he can get eight seasons by uh, telling the heart of the story, bringing in new fans, uh, appealing to like a much broader audience. Uh, but what do you guys think? Would love to hear from you. Um, I also would love to hear what you think about the images. Uh, one of my favorite parts about doing this is hearing from you guys. So would love if you commented and while you're down there, if you could like and subscribe to the channel to just keep up with everything that's going on over here. Um, that would be much appreciated and I'll see you guys in the next one.